Learning Construction. Learn, share, expand. Hey guys, this is Certainly with LearningConstruction.com and welcome to another quick video about uh, foundations. So in this video, I would like to talk about how to start placing the uh, rebar in the foundation. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, skip the step that you already dug the foundation to the proper uh, bottom of footing elevation, which uh, if you didn't, then you can see the other video that we had. And then we're also going to assume that you know how to read rebar and how to read the plans. If you don't, you can also visit our other videos. Once you have the footing uh, completely dug out, what you want to do is you want to start placing your rebar from the bottom up. Now, one thing that I want to tell you guys is rebar can be very dangerous uh, on in anything that you do with rebar. Uh, handling, uh, ins installation, using the wire, using the rebar itself, cutting it, bending it, it's really heavy and uh, it can get really dangerous. So please be cautious. thing that you have to have in your mind is safety. Safety is always first. So use goggles, use gloves, uh, don't lift any weight that you can't pick up. One thing that I tell everybody that I work with is if you don't know, then it's better that you tell somebody who does that you don't know. This way we're all aware that you are not experienced with it and it'll be much easier for everybody to understand what you should and you should not do. Okay, so with gloves and everything in hand ready to go, um, you want to start with the lower mat. <clears throat> now remember when you're placing the rebar on the floor you don't want the rebar to be touching any type of soil uh, any other surface but the steel itself this is because you need to have certain clearance for the concrete and you also want to avoid that the uh, reinforcing steel gets corroded by the soil or by other elements so once you build the lower mat of the steel which you can see on this picture over here we have a lower mat in steel then you need to raise a lower mat using uh, adobes like the concrete adobes that we have here you can they're readily available you can buy those from stock in any shop or you can build yourself uh, some uh, don't use wood please do not use wood because wood on wood will rot and undermine the concrete and inspectors don't like to see wood so do not use any type of wood uh, on items that are going to remain inside of the footing. Okay, so the next thing is you want to build yourself the upper mat. The, the first on the type of foundation, some of them won't even have it. Uh, it, it. It all depends on the type of footing that you're building. But the, you want to make sure that when you're placing this mat or you're placing the steel, that you have the proper overlap on the steel. If you look at this video, you see when we're putting new bars, bars don't go end to end with each other. They actually overlap. And how much they overlap is what they're showing on the drawings. The drawings will have a standard detail such as uh, 30 bar diameter, which means is 30 times the width of the diameter of the rebar. So, for example, if you have half an inch rebar, you multiply by 30, that equals 15 inches. So each rebar needs to overlap the other one 15 inches, and you're going to end up with a total of 30 inches overlap. Corners is the same deal. Don't just go butt and butt. You have to make sure that the rebar overlaps whatever the details are calling for on your structural plans. And don't be stingy with your tire wire. You you want this thing to be real tight. As you can see over here, those guys are putting a lot of work into tying the rebar one by one. Because remember, once you're pouring the concrete, these are these are approximately 145 pounds per cubic foot that is falling on top of this reinforcing steel so the last thing you want is this thing to just fall apart when you're pouring concrete so you know tie everything well make sure it's well secured uh, the next thing that you want to make sure is all the items are going to be on the surface so if you're building a foundation for example for a slab for the house that you want to make sure that you you set up and you lay out all your bolts and J-bolts and structural dowels in the wall and you incorporate them into your rebar. Um, don't, for personal experience, try to avoid wet setting these items after you pour the concrete, especially because most of the times the problem that you have is that you're trying to set up a bolt or, or 
or a J-Bolt and you can't because you had so much rebar inside of your foundation so you want to make sure you set these things prior to pouring concrete and then you're trying to avoid making mistakes and forgetting them once you pour the concrete if you can see in this video over here we're pouring the foundation for the retaining wall so we were very careful in how we laid out the uh, vertical dowels are coming out of the foundation and they're going inside of the cells for the masonry block and uh, we secured them by using two by fours we used a, a fair amount of stakes to make sure that it was well secured once again when you're pouring concrete you're going to be walking inside of your footing you're going to be pouring 145 pounds per cubic foot so you want to make sure this thing is solid and it's not going to go anywhere and that's it for this video guys uh once again i hope you guys liked it and if you have any comments or questions or you can't understand my accent i totally get it just Put it on the comment. Uh, put a comment on the box below, or send me an email, or yeah, you can send me a request and uh, learningconstruction.com. Well, thank you guys. Bye.